This is the brand new EVGA enclosure, the DG... Wait, what is that? What do you mean? What is what? That. What is that? Get rid of it. Anyway, as I was saying, this is the DG77. Let's take a closer look. What's up guys, today I have a new case to take a look at and it's from a company that you might not immediately think of when you consider which enclosure to buy for your next project. This is the EVGA DG77 and it's their flagship case in the DG7 lineup. This comes on the heels of their DG8 cases from 2016 and is scaled down quite a bit, although if you look close enough you could certainly see some aspects of design that have kind of bled over. For starters, the exterior and all that glass. Yes, I really did peel off the logo and perimeter decals that come pre-installed because, to be honest, I just think they look tacky. EVJ actually does provide a slew of different colored logos in case you want to swap out the white, but it wasn't the color that bothered me, it was just the kind of boastful and unnecessary branding. We know this is an EVGA case already because of the two RGB controllable logos, one on the front and one on the side on the PSU shroud, as well as the E's all over the thumb screws. I don't need to be reminded of the exact model every time I glance over at my tower. At CES 2017, I was in the EVGA suite with Paul of Paul's Hardware and Kyle from Bitwit. EVJ asked us if we liked large logos on our cases and all three of us answered in the negative. I guess they received information to the contrary. With the logo fiasco out of the way, the glass underneath is heavily tinted, to the point that if you don't have interior lighting, you really can't see through it at all. Some may like this, but I prefer clear or just a slight tint so I can actually see my components. The left window has an opaque matte finished black border around the inside of the pane, which I do appreciate. But here's where things get a bit odd. The right side panel, also entirely made of glass, is completely blacked out. That same black finish found on the border of the left window completely obscures the entire right pane. I reached out to EBJ about this and asked, and apparently it was done this way to preserve the exterior continuity as the front and both sides are made of glass and they didn't want to interrupt this with a metal panel. The problem is that Glass on the right side of a case is put there as a showpiece. It allows manufacturers to show off some nifty cable routing options or a new feature, or just so you can see the other side of your power supply. The point is that you can see through it. If there's glass here with no real purpose, all it does is make the case heavier, more fragile, and more difficult to access. Moving around back, we see a strange plastic cover secured by thumb screws. Why is this here? It makes getting to your components take an extra step and provides nothing aesthetically. How often is the rear side of your tower on display? Literally never. The front of the case looks nice. I, I like how the glass was used here and the heavy tint makes sense. Looking at it initially, I did have some major concerns about airflow as the only space that isn't completely sealed up is the right edge. Luckily, and a little unexpectedly, airflow wasn't quite as much of an issue as I feared. My test system ran an 8600K overclocked to 4.7 GHz and only used a Cooler Master MA410P tower cooler, and temps maxed out at 62C under load. For comparison, I removed the front panel entirely and reran my stress test, with the resulting temps only dropping down to 58C. 4 degrees isn't insignificant, but it seems that while the pathway may be small, it is at least moderately effective, which is a relief. Behind the glass, you'll find a full length front dust filter and two of the included four EVGA 120 millimeter fans. This front mount can hold up to three 120 millimeter fans or a 360 millimeter radiator. The power supply shroud inside has a gap that affords lots of room here for push-pull configuration, so that's nice to have. The top of the case has the I.O. panel, which swaps out some expanded connectivity in favor of this K-Boost button. EVGA K-Boost forces your CPU and your GPU to run at max boost frequency, and although it has been a feature of EVGA cases and their Precision XOC software for a while now, I've never actually used it. I find manual overclocking and tuning to be just much more effective overall. The best part about this top panel is how well it promotes airflow, as the whole thing is slotted, although it does lack a filter altogether, so that's a little disappointing. 
On the underside, we find room for a 240 millimeter radiator only, and that's because of this cluster of cables at the front of the chassis. These feed the I.O., but also connect up to the RGB controller hub that's built into the 77. The lower end DG7s do not come with this. You can connect up your fans or other RGB peripherals and control them through the DG Tuner software, which has a fairly simple interface. However, there has to be a better way to cable manage this area as you're effectively eliminating space that could otherwise be used for cooling. Perhaps moving this to the other side of the tray would have been a better solution, as we see with many included fan hubs. The main shaper is fairly nondescript and can support up to an ATX motherboard. The top and rear fan mounts come pre-populated, which is kind of a rarity, actually. In total, you get four fans included here, which is plenty to promote at least decent airflow without any additional investment. Moving down to the expansion bays, EVGA includes both a vertical GPU mounting plate and the PCIe riser cable in the box of the DG77. While vertical mounts are becoming more popular, most companies make you buy the cable separately, so this is a nice cost saver. The back side of the motherboard tray is fairly spacious, and I had no issues routing cables and tying them down in an orderly fashion. However, drive space is limited. There are two 3.5 inch and two 2.5 inch mounting spots, and that's it for the entire case. For a budget case, this might be fine, but this is a $140 product, and I'd expect that people looking to build a high-end system might very well need more storage space. I also wasn't a huge fan of the full-length vertical gap between metal panels as opposed to standard grommeted openings. And let's not forget the thing about this premium priced case that makes me the most angry. This piece of crap dust filter at the bottom. This is something I complain about on $50 cases, and this is what EVGA chooses to use here? I thought you guys were better than that. Overall, this is definitely a mixed bag for me. To be honest, there's probably more that I don't like than things that draw me to build in this case. For $140, I'd expect just way better execution of so many things, like the placement of the RGB hub, the front panel airflow, the non-filtered top panel and poorly filtered bottom panel, the pointless rear plastic cover, and lack of additional connectivity options for the I.O. Just wish it was better. So what do you guys think of the DG77 from EVGA? Am I being too critical? Would you build your next system in it? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget that my merchandise store is open for business if you want to pick up a t-shirt to help support the channel and get subscribed if you're not already. As always, guys, thanks for watching.